Hello everyone, this is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. Oh, the holiday is coming up, Christmas will be here soon. I just thought I would sing for a moment because, you know what, in Giant Land, everything is happy. Everything's coming up roses for certain players, especially Evan Ingram. How the hell does Evan Ingram make the Pro Bowl? I mean, let's get, can we just get serious and honest about it for a minute? I mean, how? I mean, yes, I know there is a dearth in the tight end position because of injuries, but a guy's got 54 catches for 572 yards, eight drops, (laughs) a fumble. He only catches 56.8% of his passes thrown to him. And then there's that guy in uh, Green Bay. He, he's caught like 55 balls. I think he's caught almost 90% of his passes. For, I think, a similar amount of yards than Evan Ingram. Zero drops. Better blocker. And I believe he has 10 touchdowns. But somehow Evan Ingram goes to the Pro Bowl. I'm thinking the Giants are making the Super Bowl this year, man. Because if Evan Ingram can make the Pro Bowl with his 974 drops, the New York Giants are going to the Super Bowl and we're winning. And I think we're going to win the Stanley Cup at the same time. Because it, it's it's just utter it's just utter madness. What I want to talk about briefly today is Dave Gettleman. Dave Gettleman has been the the source of displeasure or or the source of people's frustration, or he's he's the guy that everybody loves. And it's funny because it fluctuates daily with the giant wins. And we did the video about how we are now a reactionary fan base. We're not going to get into that again. But I kind of wanted to break down some of the areas that he may have excelled in a little bit. And I wanted to kind of break down his, and it's a little early because there's only two games. There's two games left in the season, but I think we can do it now. I want to look at his free agent signings for 2020 and kind of see where, how they ranked or how the, how, the, how they panned out. Dave Gellman has not been known for his free agents. He's been more known for his draft. He had one good, really good free agent class of veterans when he was with Carolina when they went 15-1 and went to the Super Bowl. But beyond that, he's really never struck free agent gold. So I'm kind of curious to see this year what he's kind of done. So let's start Let's start at the bottom of the pile. And the bottom of the pile, of course, is going to be our old buddy, what's his name, Tola Ola, Tola Olaf. I never know how to pronounce his name. Yeah, the tight end, the 6'8", 4,450-pound tight end. No, I'm just joking, 6'8", 268 pounds tight end. Um, he, was gonna, he was basically going to be a replacement for Ellison who retired, but he didn't really work out. He's not much of a receiving threat. His blocking has been suspect at best. I mean, that to me is, you know, he's he's kind of, he, he was one of those signings that you, you thought would help in the running game and pass protection of Daniel Jones, and neither of those worked out. So he's, he's a guy that didn't really work out. Another player we need to talk about is Deion Lewis. Deion Lewis, I thought, was going to be a good signing. I really did. I thought he was going to be that third down back that we could really count on. He was going to be kind of a jack of all trades. You know, and what does he turn out to be? You know, 93 yards on 3.4 yards a carry, two touchdowns. I mean, he's been, he's, his, I would say his, uh, his kickoff returns are becoming adventurous at best, holding on to the ball. And he's only caught 19 passes for 127 yards. I mean, I mean, it's. I mean, he's he's two years removed from his fifty nine yard. Uh, excuse me, fifty nine catches back in um, Tennessee. So I mean, he he's a guy that really, in my mind, has disappointed. So he's also on the lower rung of the Dave Gettleman free agent signings. Another player we want to talk about is Kyler Frockwell. Oh, Kyler! Everyone knows how much I love Kyler. I think I'm not I'm not bashing Kyler, but I I think we all kind of knew or some of us knew what Kyler was and they knew what he was in Green Bay when they got rid of him and they basically did not jettison him in 19. They kept him, but they knew they probably weren't going to keep him in 2020. And they thought so highly of him in 19 that they went out and signed two free agent linebackers and drafted a guy in the first round. And that was after a 10 and a half sack year. I mean, he's going to get you some pressures. He's 29 years old. He did play in 11 games, started 8-3. Three sacks, 31 to combine tackles. He's ha- He had moments. And, again, he's a player of moments. But, you know, we don't need a player of moments. We need a player that's going to stay on the field consistently. Uh, I mean, he did play a very large number of snaps, which kind of is even more concerning to me because especially in the, in the last, I'd say, eight games that he played in, he played in 94, 87, 91, 90, 90, 90 uh, 98, and 100. 
And in those games, he was only averaging a couple tackles a game. He was only averaging two, three times. I mean, let's see, three, three, one, three, two, two. So, you know what, that's telling me he's on the field a lot, but he's not producing. That's kind of what happened in Green Bay, and that's why Green Bay got rid of him. So, you know what, he's a guy, another one that didn't pan out. Nate Ebner. (laughs) Why the hell he was playing safety early on in the season, I will never know. And I know it was probably because of Joe Judge and his trust of him because in his um, days in New England, but he should never have been on the field in safety. He he looked ridiculous in the uh, in the Chicago game early in the season, and you know. But at this point in time, he he should not be on the field for the amount of times that he is on the field. So I mean, it's it's just one of those things that you know, he's a guy that just didn't pan out, and that's fine. You know, you know, not everyone is going to not everyone is going to pan out, and but you know, he's a good special teams guy, but he's a guy that shouldn't have been on the field. And another player we want to talk about is Cam Fleming. According to Pro Football Focus, Cam Fleming is the greatest offensive lineman there ever lived. There's going to be a bust of him in Canton for Cam Fleming. He's going to be right next to Orlando Pace. And I'm using guys that are from this century, so people will be like, who the hell is he talking about John Hanna? I don't know who that guy is. But, John, yeah, I mean, he was a guy, you know what, I said this before, if you're relying on Cam Fleming to be your starter, you know, there was going to be problems. Plain and simple. You know, if he's going to be a tackle and he's going to start, you, you got because he's never won a job. He's never won a full time job. He's more of a swing player, which is fine for what he is. But he has moments where he's competent, and he has moments that he's not competent, <laughs> very much so not competent. And then he then he makes plays, and you scratch your head like, what the hell did he just do? So I mean, we I think we all kind of knew. And I told people in the beginning of the season, if we're going to rely on Cam Fleming to be a starter, we were going to be in a lot of trouble. And like I said, he he's whole, he's held his own at points in time, but he is he is strictly, to my mind, he is strictly a backup offensive lineman, and that's what he is. That's what he's always been, and that's what he's always going to be. It's it's not a slight to him. People are players are just who they are. And then we have to talk about Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy is going to be in the middle of the pack of free agents because he got us a win in Seattle. He's a professional. He showed you that even in the Cleveland game. He knows how to go through his pre-snap reads. He knows how to put the team in the proper position. His problem is he's an 11-year vet, and the talent level is just not there anymore. I mean, and we signed him to a $1.5 million guaranteed deal. So you know what? If I have to sign a backup quarterback for a $1.5 million guaranteed deal and he gets me a win in Seattle, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the backup quarterback because you never want to see the backup quarterback play. That's just the way it is. But you know what? He's he was a he's kind of a middle of the road signing, I think. And then we have to get into what I like to refer to as the gems of this. Oh, oh no, we forgot about Austin Johnson. Austin Johnson was a good pickup, one year deal. You know what? Um, a guy that came in, he's really he's solidified and fit into the rotation. I would like to have seen him play more. But when you have Dexter Lawrence, Dalvin Thompson, Leonard Williams, and B.J. Hill, it's kind of hard to crack the lineup. A lot. He seems to always be around the ball. I would like to have him back. I mean, I don't think he's the greatest uh, defensive tackle, but like I said, he 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 is a good he is a good veteran presence on the team, and I like to see him back. And then we hit the gems because you know what, Dave Gettleman did hit some gems. Blake Martinez, Blake Martinez. I I did a video saying that we should that we were going to sign Blake Martinez and James Bradbury, and you can go look it back. It was about six seven months ago, and you know what. And I had worries about Blake Martinez in reference to his coverage skills and his ability to go sideline to sideline. And you know, and all those got crushed. All those worries went away. Blake Martinez is a giant linebacker. He, he keeps this up. He is going to etch himself into the giant linebacker's ra- Mount Rushmore. He really is. You know, but he's got to do it for like another five years. But he's, he's really is a giant. He is a giant linebacker. He's the guy you think of when, you know, you think of the Giants like, you know, Taylor, Carlson, Reasons, and Banks, you know, for the people that we're going a little bit further back, but not that far back. But he's that guy. The other gem, of course, is James Bradbury. James Bradbury, man, I liked I liked him coming out of college. I liked him when he went over and replaced Josh Norman in Carolina. I knew he, you know, his, his the talent level he had to go against when he was in Carolina was second to none. So you knew he was going to be a lockdown guy. You knew he was going to be a player. 
you know, he is just one of those guys that he, when he's on the left, he's on the left side, he's on the right side. No matter what side you put him on, he's going to cover his man. He's going to play this position well. He's going to make sure he's in space. He's going to make sure that he does the right thing. He is just a fantastic corner, and he proved that repeatedly this season. How he did not make the Pro Bowl, I, I don't know. I mean, that's just. I mean, that's just. That's just crazy. Oh, no, he did make the Pro Bowl. <laughs> That's right. I forgot. This is reverse world. <laughs> Evan Ingram made the Pro Bowl, too. I'm surprised Cam Fleming didn't make the Pro Bowl. I was joking. Yes, I knew he made the Pro Bowl. That was, kinda, that was me being what they refer to as sarcastic. Hope you enjoyed the sarcasm today. But you know what? He's just a guy. He's just a guy you want to have on your team. You, and I laugh, though, because people will be like, well, you didn't hear a lot about him today. Well, that's great because you don't want to. Because if you don't hear anything about James Radbury, it means he locked his man down, he did his job, and he went home. And last but not least, Logan Ryan. Logan Ryan, I think everyone was pumped about the Logan Ryan signing, but I didn't think we knew how good he was going to be. Uh, some fans wanted him to play, uh, play corner. I knew he wasn't going to play corner because of the fact that he held out signing because he didn't want to play corner. He, you know, he, he's smart enough to know his, his skills have deteriorated enough that in that corner position that he is not uh, fluid enough in that position, but he can play in the defensive backfield and in many safety positions and even in the box. Great veteran presence, fantastic pickup. We got lucky to get him for the price that we did. The problem is we're going to need to pay him if we want to keep him next year. But if you take a look at it, I mean, Dave Gettleman has had some hits this year, and I think this is probably one of the best free agents classes that he has had in his career. And I know that's not saying a lot because he hasn't hit on a bunch of them, but you know what? This is a winner, and you got to give him credit for that. At the end of the day, like Dave Gettleman or hate Dave Gettleman, he rebuilt this defense. He got the tools for, you know, he got the tools for Joe Judge to turn around and revamp this defense and make it is and make it to what it is right now. I know I'm not going to get into um, I'm not going to add Leonard Williams to this list because he was on the team last year, and I don't like really a free agent when you basically tag somebody. Come I mean, technically, he is a free agent, but you know I think of him more as a tag guy. But um, you got to give Dave, you got to give Gettleman credit. You know this this was a good free agent class. Is it enough to save this job? Who knows? We'll see. They win these next two games. The giant fan pendulum will swing back to Dave Gilman's a genius. So, well, or you hate him. It doesn't matter. You know what? It's Christmas. It's Christmas. Oh, my God. I love the holidays. I really do. But again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Giant sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you could like, if you could subscribe, if you ring that play, think you know what that means, that'd be awesome. <laughs>